So what are robust standard errors and why do we actually need them? Let me give you a quick example. So we have a regression model that says the happiness of a person, this person is called I, depends on his age. And that is our very, very simple model. And let's say we go out on the street and we just ask people and gather some data. So we ask them about their age and we ask the people about their happiness. And maybe we find a person that is 20 and very happy, a person that is 30 that is not so happy, another person that is 30 that is happier, a person that is 30 not so happy, and so on. So we just gather some data. And maybe in the end our data looks something like this. So there is kind of a downward sloping trend in our data, and this would be our regression line. So our coefficient, beta hat, so the influence of age on happiness, which we pose in our model, is relevant, is negative. What about the variance of the data? So in our model, the variance comes from the error term. So let's say that those are just random components that influence happiness, but that have nothing to do with age. Right, for instance, maybe you find two 30-year-olds and one just broke up with his or her girlfriend and is very unhappy and the other one just got into a relationship and is, oh, on average, a lot happier than everybody else. And this is what you see reflected in the data. So what you see is for people who are 30, there is variance, right? It's not only age that depends your happiness level, it's also random factors. But the important thing is that those random factors do not vary differently with age, right? You see that the difference between the random variation at every age level is the same, right? The random variation has the same order of magnitude. And this is what we would call a homoscedastic error term. What does it mean? It means that no matter which age level we take, so dependent on the age level, the variance of our error term is constant, right? And this constant is just here a Greek letter, sigma. Let's go into another case. Let's say we also gather data, but this time we gather data a bit differently. So what we do is we ask the same people, but at different points in time. So over a year, we ask the same person, I don't know, three times, and maybe we have a 20 year old that is very stable in happiness, Maybe we ask a 30-year-old that is very, varies a lot in happiness. Maybe we ask another 40-year-old who's mid-stable in happiness and a 50-year-old. So once again, we kind of have a downward trend in our regression. So our beta coefficient would, also, would once again be negative. So we have, would have a negative influence of age on happiness. What you see is that the variation of the happiness differs with the age level and with the individual we asked. So the person at 50 has a very small variation, the person at 30 has very large variation, and the person at 20 has very small variation. So in this case, in this data, the variance of our error term, of our random variation, dependent on the age, is not a constant, but it depends on the age itself, right? At, at an age of 30, we have a very large variance. At the, at the age of 20, we have a very low variance. And this is what we would call a heteroscedastic case. So what do we do with this? As a researcher, you need to think about if your data is actually homoscedastic or heteroscedastic. And depending on in which case you are, you will have different formulas for calculating the variance of the regression coefficient beta hat. And in the next video, I will give you the formulas, but this is a very math heavy exercise. You can also just look into your statistical software like Stata or R and use standard errors for the heteroscedastic case, which are called robust standard errors, or standard errors for the homoscedastic case, which are which do not really have a name, they are the standard, standard errors. And if you run a regression in R or Stata, 
they will usually they will always give you the standard standard errors formula. So they'll assume that standard errors that that the error term is homoscedastic. If you have reason to believe that your error term is in fact heteroscedastic, then you'll need to make an extra command to calculate robust standard errors.